So you wanted to mirror what Mantronics was. So you you knew that you it was going to be a producer with with a with a singer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, once you got a mail, um, how, how, did did you just work on demos before looking for a deal, or how did, how how does how does that journey go? So there's there was a guy met named Paris Davis, who dudes from Brooklyn, um, actually two blocks away from where my grandmother lived. Um, I didn't know that at the time, but Paris, he was a cool dude. He was older. He knew just know a bunch of girls. <laughs> you know, like Puff and and um, uh, Puff, Andre Harrell, Jimmy Love. He knew all of those dudes. Um, I didn't know any of these guys. Oh. So I met a lot of them through Paris. And um, Paris, I gave him the top floor to, I had a townhouse, four stories, right? Wow. And the top floor was just sitting there. I was like, if you want, you can stay up there. So he stayed up there. And while he was there, he was like, yo, I like what y'all doing. I might be getting this job over at Epic. I was like, all right, well, then you might want to sign us. <laughs> Upstairs is free. <laughs> so, um, so we we went through our thing with Paris. Um, Paris is such a cool dude, but he's like, for an A&R, he's an artist himself. He's just as left and crazy as any artist. <laughs> um, so, you know, we go through th- our ups and downs and our fights and everything. And Paris introduced me to one of his friends, Jeff Burroughs. And at that time, Paris wasn't really checking. He was like, whatever, y'all, make some better songs. His friend Jeff liked it and called Benny Medina. So we went out to um, L.A., met with Benny Medina, and um, Benny loved it. As soon as we walked in his office, he knew every single word to every song. What? It was like, you know, it was it was good, you know, because we were kind of getting beat down. It was good to go to L.A. and somebody just, you know, loved the stuff. So when that happened, of course, that caught the attention of Paris. Paris going crazy, like, I helped put this together. How could y'all? <laughs> so then it was like, all right, Paris, you got, you know, pull out all the stops. Get Time Matola. So he brought Time Matola in. Wow. And Tommy was like, um, oh, in between this, I had also um, partnered up with Jimmy Henchman at the time because Jimmy had a group called um, Jimmy Henchman and Peter Thomas from Housewives of Atlanta. Okay. Were partners. And they had a company and they had a group out of London called Rhythm and Bass. Um, who, you know, Wayne from the group is, is really like... The, they're, they're rock stars now. They're huge writers now. They, they're killing it. But we gave them Tell Me First. Wow. And came out on Epic in the UK. Didn't do well. So we had that. So now the team is really me and Jimmy because when my money started getting dry, Jimmy just started helping with me self-fund this thing. So, um, you know, we took care of everything. And um, when, when we saw Benny Paris... Got a little pressure from that. He brought in Time with Tola. Tommy was like, what do y'all want? He was like, you want this much money? You want this, this, this? And I was like, and give him a, a publishing deal. He said, that's all you want? Got on the phone, got everything. Did, did you think that you could write some more? Or, did, or, or, or what was it? I mean, did you? <laughs> yeah, we got more, for sure. We definitely, we definitely got more. We definitely, those days you get like 300,000, 350, we got like 600,000 for a record deal or so 500, something crazy. So we got everything we wanted because we, you know, Paris put us with um with Tommy. So we go to sign the deal and um, Amel's attorney, Amel's like, you got to, you know, see my attorney. I'm like, for what? She's like, I don't know. I'm just fine. All right. I'm dropping her off. I forget about it. Next day she's like, hey, my lawyer is hitting, uh, you know, what time? All right, I go down there. I get to her lawyers, and he's like, this ain't happening. She's not signing to you. Because she was supposed to sign to my production company, and my production company does the deal. Mm. What I did with Curtis. He's like, she's not she's not signing this. I was like, why is she not signing this? So he's like, well, because this should be 50-50. I'm like, how? I've been spending all my money. I've done this before. I put this shit together. Like, what are you talking about? I look over at a mail and she's just looking at the floor and I'm like, yo, what's wrong with this dude? She's like, I don't know. I'm like, what do you want to do? She's like, I don't know, but I gotta listen to my lawyer. So I'm feeling like I'm 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 just feeling real uneasy, like somebody's pulling the wool over my over my eyes. 
So I curse him out because he's telling me this doesn't happen in groups. I said, it's never happened. He said, well, CNC Music Factory. I said, yeah, CNC Music Factory, Soul to Soul, and Mantronics, stupid. I was in Mantronics. You can't tell me nothing about this. So he's like, oh, well, that is interesting. I'm like, yeah, so she needs a sign. I go into the other room, into the conference room. We take a break. My lawyer gets on the phone. My lawyer was in Atlanta. He gets on the phone. He's like, look, this is the deal. Benny Medina offered a Mel a solo artist deal because he didn't like you telling him no. Oh, shit. So that's when I started understanding uh, this is chess. I get it. So I just had to eat my pride. You know, this is something that I was working on before Mel came in the picture. So I had to really assess the value of doing this deal versus not. And I was like, bro, you can't start over. You can't go find a new singer, go do new music. Like, and She's dope. He's how, you know, you're not going to find somebody like her. Like, this is just a lot. So I went back in the room and I was like, all right. Well, Mel's going to owe me over $60,000, but, you know, let's do it. Let's sign the deal. And then we signed a deal with Epic. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I I just, I was going to ask you because Jeff Burrows, was he not the one that signed um, A. Marie? Uh, I don't know. He was president of Bad Boy for a while, though. Yeah, yeah, I I I worked at uh, with um, Edmonds Entertainment for a while, and he he he, okay. he was he he was there. He signed yeah. it. Yeah, so I I know Jeff. Yeah, so yep. oh I was, wow, and Benny, yeah, cause so so yeah, so they tried to wow. Yeah, Benny, me and Benny are good friends. I understand. <laughs> like that's that was just my introduction to the big boys. You know. Wow. You know, no, you know, I wasn't mad at it. Benny's Benny's a good friend. I think Benny's a. a a genius, super, super smart guy. But then how come you didn't have a lawyer like a male had when you were getting signed with the Mantronics? I mean, you, you know, like... you know what's funny? <laughs> My lawyer, well, well, think about this, right? I'm a kid from New York. <laughs> I don't know lawyers. Yeah, yeah. I don't got no lawyers on my block. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no lawyers <laughs> in my community. I don't know no lawyers. So my first lawyer was um, Mantronics attorney was Steve Shapiro, who's a who's a big entertainment attorney. Steve gave me my lawyer. <laughs> it's a apprentice. professor. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a good thing. like, oh, this guy's great. He was, he was my teacher. I'm like, oh, shit, I, I got the teacher. I got an advantage. <laughs> Wasn't no advantage. Um, his name was Seymour Fyg. I think, I don't know if he had dementia or what, but it was like, <laughs> he was a character and he just made me sign whatever, to be honest, you know. Um, a Mel, a Mel's lawyer wasn't a great lawyer. He was just, you know, lawyers are deal makers or deal breakers, and hers was a deal breaker. Mm. You know, I think he was looking out for his client, but I think he also was trying to direct it somewhere where he can get a bigger check and have more control. Yeah, what was going on? Yeah. Wow. Hey, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you love what you watched, there's over a hundred artists that we've interviewed, so please check out the videos. Remember to like, share, honor, and subscribe. But better still, become a member of Halftime Chat and get exclusive videos ahead of time. But thanks for watching. Take care.